Guys, how we doing? Welcome to Good Works Tractors. We are going to do a one-year review, well, technically 14-month review of my PJ trailer. This is my first gooseneck trailer. I've had, I don't know, <laughs> umpteen pull-behind, you know, uh, 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 bumper-mounted trailers, but this is my first gooseneck. So, overall, I'm pretty impressed. This doesn't mean this is the perfect trailer. I've actually had a fair amount of issues with it not using it every day okay i don't i didn't buy this trailer to use every day my business model is doing kind of local deliveries within two three four hours at most a lot of my customers are states and states away where we just hire a freight hauler to come pick up the equipment and uh, deliver it to them that way so this is probably has maybe i don't know 15,000 miles on it at most maybe not even that much keep that in mind as we go through it this isn't used every day but also at the same time, I got this downrated. You know, I wanted to stay underneath the 26,000 plus CDL requirement just to kind of streamline things, keep it easier for myself and for my business. I like things easy and simple and just no fuss. So we're rocking under 26,000 pounds combined GVWR between the truck and the trailer. So if you've been in the market for a gooseneck trailer, I know how hard it is to find a decent review about something after it's been used. I searched all over the place to try to find these videos and i saw some of them when they were new but this is something that's been sitting around you know it's got the wear on it the weather on it. it's got some bumps and bruises that kind of thing this is just a real review of the equipment being used not heavily just normally let's go ahead and start out with the best thing my favorite thing about this trailer and this comes from years of dealing with either pull out ramps or fold down ramps or some other variation of that i love these monster ramps here now depending on the manufacturer that you're chasing you could see mega ramps, you could see monster ramps, but you're gonna have some variation of what you see right here. It's a totally solid, stable, connected way to get your equipment on and off of the trailer. I absolutely love it. On the flip side, what I actually dreamed about getting and really wanted to get was gonna be a hydraulic dovetail. You push a button on a controller and it's just going up and down. It gives you a lot more usable space out here as well, but it just, it's just a push of a button, right? You don't have to worry about lifting these things up. These are pretty heavy, okay? They're, you get to a certain point when you lift up and then it kind of breaks free and releases and just flips over. And same thing when you're lifting it back up to close them, but it's still a, a, a cumbersome kind of process there. And for me, it's not so bad, but for some of the, uh, let's just say older guys that uh, that work with me, it can be a bit of a process. It's, it's not the end of the world. It's not a deal breaker. And especially, um, in comparison to the old bumper pull with the pull-out ramps that are just a skinny little ramp, right? This goes the entire way side to side with the exception of a little gap there in the middle, but it's just so stable. You feel so safe driving things on and off of here. It's not too steep. It's just, I love it. I can't say enough about it. The downside with the hydraulic dovetail is one, it's going to add on a lot of extra weight for that whole system there. And two, it's very pricey. So the main thing for me was I wanted to stay underneath that certain weight rating there to avoid the CDL and adding that additional weight onto the trailer itself without any equipment on here that I can haul around. It just took away too much of that weight, um, that capacity there that I could haul in equipment. I just didn't want to deal with that. Now, the worst thing about this trailer is actually right underneath here. My father-in-law was doing a delivery going down the highway and he had somebody pull up alongside of him and honk on the horn. Guess what? The spare tire mount from underneath here was hanging on by one rod, the one that you would crank to loosen the thing up and get it down, just sparking, wearing out, going down the highway. That was an upcharge. I actually paid to have this underneath the deck here instead of the a little bit more inconvenient location up on the gooseneck up there because those tires are heavy. All I can figure out what I think actually happened was that mount that was bolted onto the bottom side of the trailer here, it just vibrated. It was, you know, obviously with a really heavy tire on there, just kind of shaking enough. It wore right through, it tore right through the steel. Boom, gave way, away it went, and it was dragging down the road. That was a pretty big disappointment. But one of the coolest things I did was actually add on these D-rings. These are stake pocket D-rings right here. So if you have stake pockets on your trailer, anywhere, these things are going to give you new versatility. You can pull them out with a pin down here. I've covered them in other areas. These are a great add-on. Links below in the description of the video. So what I like about these D-rings is that even though I actually had and I paid for welded on D-rings, like the ones that you'll see on here, is these give me more flexibility, especially if you especially if you load different equipment, haul different equipment around. You just never know where that right spot is going to be. 
to tie down your equipment. And so having the flexibility of these stake pocket versions where you can kind of move them all along the rail in different locations really gives you a lot of flexibility. Plus, what you're gonna see is that compared to the weld on D-rings, these ones are a lot bigger. And so you can actually fit one of those, uh, uh, you know, the flat ratchet styles in here as well as like a regular hook style too. So that is something you can't do with one of these weld on D-rings. Now really overall, this trailer has been fantastic for me. And you know, some things like a trailer, a vehicle, whatever it is, if they're working right, you don't really even think about it. It's almost just a given that you expect it to perform well. So when little things go wrong, that's when you kind of notice something going on. So at this point, I would be highly likely, I guess, to purchase a PJ trailer again, and I'm looking for a dump trailer, and I'm gonna consider PJ trailers as well for a dump trailer uh, to suit my needs. But, you know, I'm just kind of nitpicking because if there is a trend that's out there and maybe other folks that aren't making videos about this are having the same kinds of things go on, then it's something that maybe everybody should be aware of. But I'm having a lot of boards that are actually starting to pop up here. Again, being only a year old or so, that's a little bit I don't know, I feel like unusual or unnecessary or just it shouldn't be happening. And at the same time, we're having some some shrinkage issues in between boards as well, where the gaps are really starting to um, expand. And it's not like it's a safety concern so much, but it's just something where I feel like, I don't know, you spend, what did I spend, twelve or $13,000 on this piece of equipment here. It's really not an, a complicated piece of equipment uh, in the grand scheme of things. And I just think that I don't know. What are you going to do though? It's wood, right? It's going to expand. It's going to contract temperature base. Maybe I'm just overthinking it. A couple other ways I could have gone. I could have got what's called uh, black wood. I think it is where it's got an overlay in it. And I think it's more of a composite type material where especially it's going to help with grip as well. That's one of the things that are on the ramps and on this deck here when it's rainy or in the wintertime, you know, when you just don't have a lot of good traction, that, uh, that inlay there would really help with that grip and make you feel a lot more secure and safe when you're going up and down the ramp or even walking around on the deck. Another option that you could have gone would have been steel all the way across, but that's not something I wanted to deal with. Also, I had the running lights on this entire side go out on me. So at first I thought maybe I just needed to add some uh, dielectric grease. So I, I bought some of that, put that on there thinking that might solve the problem. Still didn't. So I paid to have the upgraded um, lifetime LEDs on the whole trailer here. It was an easy fix, so I just took it to the trailer dealer that was just down the road. Not a PJ dealer, but uh, that's the good thing about PJ is that um, the place I bought this from was actually close to an hour away from me. But when I had an issue like this, I said, take it to the closest dealer near you because time is important, time is money, you know? So I took it to them, had, uh, had it repaired, had the lights repaired, and just sent the bill up to uh, the dealer I bought it from, and they submitted it for warranty to PJ. And then also up here on the, uh the latch for the toolbox that comes standard, okay, which is really nice. This does come standard uh, on the trailer series that I bought, but this latch right here, it actually didn't latch at all when I first bought it. And uh, the solution of all things was just to take a hammer and beat it over so that way it aligned with the hook that's on here on the bottom side. I don't know, or have a welder deal with it, but we were able to just hammer it over enough I just feel like something like that. I mean, give me a break. I mean, that's just a simple quality check thing. But uh, the last issue that we had right there, or the first issue, I guess, would be that latch. But you can see now it does latch, stays shut. You know, it's just a good storage place for all the, uh, the different straps and the chains and tie downs that we have. So I did four significant upgrades to this trailer here when I ordered it, uh, above and beyond, you know, just the basics. So number one, I added on a lot of extra D-rings all up and down there like we talked about. I mean, just for all the different equipment that I'm hauling, it's just, you can never have enough. It's kind of the old adage if you're going to buy a pole barn, you know, a gun safe, a truck, a trailer, it doesn't matter what it is. You can almost never have enough or never have big enough. It's the same kind of thing. I had D-rings plastered all up and down here, but those removable stake bucket D-rings really add to the mix. Next up, I've had a lot of trailers with tire issues on them, all right? So tires blowing out down the road, it's just been something I've been plagued with over the years. I went with some 14 ply tires that are on this trailer here. I upgraded to the biggest, the, the, the heaviest ply rating that they had available. And knock on wood, I haven't had a single issue yet with a trailer tire. I'm counting my blessings. I also figured it'd be nice to have some lights that were on the trailer. I don't think we've used these a single time and those are gonna be the halogen lights that are kind of on the top of the gooseneck up there. I've turned them on and off just to see how they work, and they're just the old halogens. I should probably put some LED bulbs in there, but we really haven't had a need to really test them out or load up at night. Maybe we will again with the winter coming this time and the day's getting so short. It's like, you know, it gets dark at, at dinner time these days, but 
that's one of those benefits or one of those upgrades I'm not sure I'm really seeing the benefit of. Probably the biggest one for me is actually adding the primer to uh, the trailer before it was painted, okay? So I'd gone back and forth. That's one of the reasons I really hated the steel trailers for a while was the fact that they just look rusty and nasty so quick after you buy a brand new trailer. I just, I hate that. So I did it. I paid the upcharge to have it primed, but not only that, I had to have it... Um, shipped from Texas instead of, I think it was Tennessee. So it was an additional shipping cost as well. So it was quite a bit more money just to have the primer done. And you can actually see underneath uh, the trailer body where it's already starting to rust. And in different areas, it's starting to rust and kind of show its, its uh, age already. And that's kind of, that's pretty disappointing to me. You know, I feel like if you're gonna pay that additional money there, that primer, which the sole purpose of it is to help prevent that kind of an issue, and it still only made it a year or so before it started to happen, and in some areas on it, not even a year. I feel like, I don't know, I didn't get my value uh, the way that I thought I might. You know, so really this trailer is pretty close to perfect for me. You know, it's finally to that, that size where, yeah, I can run out of space, you know, but I feel like in 95% of applications, I have enough space for whatever I need to do. Whatever I need to deliver, if it's one delivery with a lot of attachments, if it's a couple of deliveries, whatever it is. You know, a couple of things I wish I would have done include putting a deck on the neck, you know, just to really maximize that usable space. You can probably get another, I don't know, four or five feet of space up there on top of the gooseneck if I were to do that. Getting a torsion hitch, you know, for up in the gooseneck, that's something I could really use some feedback on. I have I've had a torsion hitch for my bumper pull before, which was a Gen Y. I don't know if there's other options out there. I'm curious to know if that actually makes a significant difference or not. I also got this winch kit system. You know, the, the it's pre-wired, okay, for a, a, a battery. It's got the plate, everything up here. It's pre-drilled, ready to add one on. Fortunately, I haven't had the need to add or, or use a winch on this trailer yet. Maybe I'm using this trailer wrong, huh? I got to be doing something wrong, right? But I got to add a winch on here. I'm curious what you guys are using, what you're having success with. Let me know, leave a comment below. So in the grand scheme of things, trailers, man, these things live a tough life, you know? They are out in the elements all the time. I mean, it is just, it's nasty, you know, year round, especially up in the north, you know, like we're in Michigan here and, and you're seeing salt all winter long, you know, if it could be four or five, maybe even six months out of the year sun baking down in the summertime. I mean, maybe someday I'll have some indoor storage, but I know most of us are having their trailers sit outside, which it just really isn't good for it to be in the elements. So that's not helping at all. But that being said, overall, I would buy a PJ again. They're not paying me to say that. I would be confident, especially using one, you know, having the experience of using one for a year plus right now and, and going on. Overall, it's been a really good trailer for us, and I just wanted to share this kind of feedback. So if you like trucks, you like trailers, you like tractors, this could be the channel for you. Hit that like button underneath the video, and also subscribe if you haven't done so already. That would really help us out. Again, if you're looking for something like those stake pocket D-rings, things like that are going to be in the description underneath the video or in my Amazon store. You can go there where I kind of accumulated a whole assortment of links for trucks, tractors, trailers, all that kind of stuff. Cool stuff for you guys. As always, stay safe. We'll see you soon.